Boom, coming in hot, Kinky. Hump day, brother. Well, no, 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 it's beyond hump day. It's Thursday. It's Thursday, yeah. Feels like hump day, though. It's been a long week so far. That's because you're working. You're, you're on the grind this week, so the week's taking I'm on longer. The grind. And, dude, it also feels like, you know, this time of year, too, with, like, you know, the Super Bowl just ended. <laughs> Spring training is just getting started. Basketball, NBA's in the middle of their season, so that's not, you know, hockey's. It's just, like, Right now, you know, yeah, it's, like, it's uh, dead time. Uh, but yeah, yeah, so it's dead time. We were talking about things like, yeah, I mean, yeah. the one thing to start getting hyped up a little bit right now for would be the WBC, right? Yeah, dude, we, go. I, I tell you what, man, you're a baseball fan. This WBC is getting better and better. And this one, I think, with Trout kind of leading the way and like recruiting guys right away, as soon as Trout said, Mike Trout said he was going to play. I mean, everybody just got in the line. It, it feels like the only superstar that's really not playing for the U.S. is Aaron Judge. You know, it, 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 yeah. it, you know, so you got you got Schwarber, Trey Turner, uh, Real Muto, um, Arenado, Goldschmidt. Um, dude, it, it, it's the who's who. If you pull up the it list is. of guys, it literally, it literally yeah. is the all all star. It's well, all star. Let's start here. I'm pulling pulling up the pools. If you have not, if you live in one of the cities where these games are being played, it's, and I'm not even talking about Team USA. Right. If you can get to a game, you go to a game. When they yeah, when they were in Miami, and don't forget. Okay, so like here, look at this pool, pool D. The host is Miami. Puerto Rico, Venezuela, Israel, and the DR will be oh. playing in there. Those are some of the most intense baseball games you will ever see, right? Do you agree with that? Bro, I totally agree. And you chance, you're right, dude. If you can get to these games, don't miss this. They just Come like on. literally and 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 the, the, listen man, the Dominicans and the guys from Venezuela, all these guys these these guys, they love their countries. And just like the US loves their country, but I'm saying when you go see these teams play, they're taking this seriously. I think when the WBC first started, like, ah, what is this thing? I think now it's gaining momentum. A couple of years ago when the U.S. won it, you know, Leland was the manager. He came back. Boom, boom. D. Rose. The Rose is managing the WBC this year. But, I mean, dude, these guys are fired up. We had Schwarber and Real Muto and Trey Turner on the other night at MLB Network. Mm. And I was asking them about, because, you know, Chich, when you go to spring training, bro, the pitchers are always ahead of the hitters. I mean, always. Right. You know, it's like, your first week there, you're like, you don't even know if you're a big leaguer. The balls are going past you. So I'm like, how, how am I going to hit this? Right? Well, dude, March 11th is when the WBC's first game is. Yes. Like they're, yes. So I, I was asking Schwarber, I said, dude, how do you get ready? I mean, how do you get ready, you know, as a hitter for this game? He said, listen, you've got to start seeing pitching early. you got to get some at-bats early in spring. And he's like, but once you cross those white lines, it's time to compete and time to win. So, I mean, dude, people are fired up. I mean, they really are. And, and like you said, those games in Miami with Dominican and who is it? Dominican, Venezuela, Puerto Rico, Israel, so, yeah. and Puerto Rico. Dude, yeah. those are going to be incredible. Yes. Those are going to be incredible. If you can get out there, get out there to those games. Yeah. Oh, by the way, this is Mookie Betts. Is, that's one guy we didn't mention on USA. Mookie Betts is playing in it for the first time in his career, too. So you're going to see that. Another one for uh, Cuba. How about this? Cespedes is playing in it. Remember him? We forget about how great Yohannes Cespedes was. And he's playing with his brother. His brother, often considered as good or maybe even better than him, never, you know, he couldn't, like, escape to the United States. That's why he never played here. But that's going to be really cool to see the Cespedes brothers play together. That's gonna be, is Puig playing? Let's see. Hold on. Let me put me on the spot here. I don't see I, I, you know, it changed the other day. It was him. pretty cool. Like, um, um, uh, Trey Turner was saying, he goes, yeah, he goes, you know, we looked at our team and we're like, man, we got a great team. And then he goes, and then we looked at the Dominicans bullpen. They're like, oh my God, it's every legit closer <laughs> in the game is the Dominicans bullpen for the WBC. Let's do that. Anyway. And then, but, and then that line, the lineup's loaded too, but it, it's going to yeah. be fun, man. If you're, a, if you're a baseball fan, this is what the talk of the town is that, you know, these guys are the best players in the world are playing in the WBC this year mm -hmm. and do not miss these games. This is going to be, this is going to be a lot of fun. And, yeah. and dude, the uh, J Japanese team too, with Otani's playing in it, and in it, all those guys. I think yeah. Suzuki. And Remember when you sat them. down with uh, Jim Leland and he said like, coaching in a WBC was one of the greatest moments of his career. I mean, dude, he, uh, he called me that night. He, 
Leland called me the night they won. He goes, he cried the day when they won. Yeah, he, he was like, we did it, we did it, didn't we? And I go, yeah, because we shocked the world. And you go back and look at some of those games, dude. Dude, I mean, there was some freaking. Those games are games, unbelievable. Dude. How about yeah. the uh, Adam Jones catch, dude? Off oh, of incredible. was that Machado that hit that, dude? That those last yeah, like, yeah. and those games were so freaking intense. And the other thing that's really good, I personally think, if you're kind of like. Some of the guys who go there, especially the pitchers, if they're kind of fighting for their roster spots or fighting for uh, to get into a rotation or into you know their team's bullpen, some guys have shined in the WBC, and it's kind of catapulted them into the season. When we first started the WBC, like years and years ago, everybody was just getting hurt, and they were like, "This is going to be a failure." They've put all the protocols in place. There's backup guys all over the country ready to go join these rosters, even though they're not on them. Um, you know, pull pull a quad or something. All right, head back to camp or stick around. But, yeah, so that's good, too. Yeah, it's going to be great. I, I just, it's exciting, man. It's exciting. Right. Well, so speaking of international superstars, Mike Trout had, like, his kind of, like, preseason presser the other day and said he's going to do everything in his power to get Shohei Otani to stay with the Angels. What was your take on it? Is he going to give him a couple hundred mil from his, from his <laughs> Yeah, from his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> He's paying by himself. Hey, yeah. Oh, Tony, I want you to stay. All right, Trout, you got to give him <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Maybe he should go to New York. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Anyway, so we were talking before this. There's not much going on in sports right now. So we've been locked in on the TV and the movies. You too? You and Sarah too? Like. <laughs> yeah. You get this little break where it's like, all right, now we can catch up on all the shows that we didn't watch or that you get in trouble for not watching when you're when you're watching yeah. sports. I watched this movie called Plane the other night, dude. You have got yeah. to see it. Gerard, Gerard Butler and this guy Mike Coulter, who I love anyway. He's in a show called Evil, which is a whole other show. Dude, it is one of the most like high octane action. Remember like remember like the first time you saw like Die Hard? where all of a sudden oh, yeah. the action started and it just never stopped for the rest of the movie. We yeah. were like, I'm telling you, within about four minutes into this movie, you're just like, whoa, oh my God, oh my God, <laughs> holy shit, oh my God, they're going to be okay? Oh my God, that guy's going to die. Oh my God, what's happening here? It is one of the best Whoa. action movies I've ever seen. I'm, I'm putting it down on paper, dude. It would be, dude. I just, it was unbelievable. What made, what, made, what made you watch it? Someone tell you? No, we're good at, like, <laughs> we have a whole system in place. So we'll go, and first of all, we have, like, all 90 of these freaking streaming services because we just do. But dude, anyway. Dude, I, dude I, I got a question with that. Dude, like, I, I got this Rocket Money. Have you ever heard of Rocket Money? Like, I've heard like, of it. And like, yeah, so it, like, shows you all the subscriptions you have. And I'm like, what the hell? I'm paying for that? Oh, my God. I didn't know I had Hulu. I didn't know I had this. Dude, do you know what? Dude, that comes up to hundreds and hundreds of like dollars a month. Dude. Thousand dollars on stuff yes. I didn't know I had. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> Wait, does that rocket thing work? I got to get that. So that tells you dude, all of your subscriptions rocket everywhere. Bro. Do you have to type rocket. them in yeah. individually or it tells you? It tells you. Oh, I need that big time. It I just saw something. I'm like, how do they know? Dude, I just yeah, saw something don't. on my account where like two years ago, like when we started doing this, I downloaded some like app type thing to help me like pull video in and stuff that I haven't used in like a year and a half and I look at my thing I'm like fourteen ninety five I'm paying fourteen ninety five a month for something I've never dude. I haven't used in two years. Maybe dude, you I want to throw get, up. You get rocket money. Yeah dude I I had this protein shake I was getting on a subscription like sixty seven <laughs> bucks every two months I'm like what the hell are they I don't That's even terrible. use this thing anymore. I didn't know it was on subscription. You know it's That's how they get so. you. That's how they get you. Yeah. Like also like with returns I'm the same way with that. I have very, wow. I have very difficult time returning things in the mail to if it doesn't fit right or something. Like I just, dude, I'm so lazy about bro, it. Bro, I'm the worst. I do the same thing, dude. Do you know what Sarah's? Sarah's a, a return ninja, dude. Oh, return I need ninja. that. She gets it. She'll order like eight things, try it on. Doesn't work. She'll return it the next day. Me, I like, I get it. I'm like, ah, that's fine. Yeah. I just give it to uh, my buddy or <laughs> yeah, my exactly. neighbor. Exactly. Give it to my neighbor. There you go. Wait. So back to so here's here's how we handle our our trailers and stuff. So we'll go on everything and be like, oh, that show, this show is supposed to be so popular. We go directly to Rotten Tomatoes. Jess always goes, let's check the tomatoes. You go to Rotten Tomatoes and have you, do you yeah. use Rotten Tomatoes ever? Here's no, why. Dude, this is great. No, this is, this is great for oh. me and the viewers. <laughs> Here's why it's great. Now the tomatoes are the critics reviews. 
But what you need to also look at are the popcorns. So like how many popcorns they have. Popcorns okay. are the, the you and me, the viewers, like rankings. So sometimes you look, you see a movie, and it's like, oh, it only got 54 tomatoes percentage. Right, right. But then you look and you're like, wait a minute, the popcorns are good. So then you start thinking, like, do I, do I care what the critics say? Sure, to a degree. But I want to know what the fans say, right? And that's how we dissect. This one had... Here, I'm going to go to so this you lean, you lean more on the fans than the critics? It depends on the type of movie. <laughs> this is how it's deep. Incredible. We could do a whole show <laughs> on Kinsey Here's Jeff. why. This Here's... is like Cisco and Ebert do, but Kinsey Jeff is a movie. <laughs> yeah. So like a dumb movie. Like, for example, let's just say if you wanted to go see like Anaconda, which was a great movie in my opinion. It was one of the funniest. Yeah, which David, David, David Ortiz, by the way, back in the day, told me that Anaconda was his number one movie. <laughs> yeah, and there's a reason behind that too, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Top five movies, yeah. Anaconda. <laughs> Here, actually, so I'll do that right now. Anna. How do you spell conda? Anaconda? Anaconda. All right, here. Anaconda, 1997. Here's a perfect example. Oh, nobody liked that. That got 40 tomatoes and 24 audience. But see, something like that, I wouldn't even care what anybody said because you're going to go and look at a huge snake eat people. That's why you're watching a movie. It could be horrible, and that's sometimes good. But generally speaking, though, if a movie's pretty serious, like it has a serious tone or it's like more of a drama thing, I'll lean a little bit more towards the critics. If it's like action adventure or even like a horror movie we or fun, I want the fan. I want the fans because because the critics never do never rate those good. Exactly, exactly. There you go. So that's what we do. So let's actually see what plain is right now. Oh, now we could do a whole segment. Get signed by Rotten Tomatoes. Okay, see, ready? Plain, seventy six percent tomatoes, ninety four percent audience score. That's popcorn. the popcorn. <laughs> Dude, I'm just telling you right now, you got to watch this movie. It's intense. I wouldn't watch it with your youngest kids because it's like, there's some, I don't want to say, I don't. I guess I can use the term graphic, but like the fight scenes are, are pretty intense in it. But I don't even want to give up the story. Oh, yeah, don't, don't, don't tell me because I'm going to see it. Now you, you tell me, if, if, if Chinch and Jess give it freaking pop, 94% popcorn, <laughs> I'm in. I, I give it 100 popcorns, and it's doing so well. Popcorns. You give it 100 popcorns, I'm in. Yes, go watch the movie Plain. What else? What do you guys watch? Are you guys Bro, watching? I, you know, you know, this is, this is you know, getting me going here, because this is exciting. My kids are watching, like, 80s movies now. That is They're great. Like, oh, you know, yeah, yeah. Like my daughter's like, Dad, I watched Can't Buy Me Love the other day. Oh, my like, God. Dempsey. I'm like, bro. I'm like, I'm like, Carly, that's one of the greatest movies ever. <laughs> it really like, is. Freaking incredible. And then, and then they're also, what was the, another one they watched the other day? Um, like just good eighties movies. Ah, what did my son Jake watch one the other day? I can't remember, but like Breakfast Club. You oh, know what forget I mean? like, about it. Yeah, you know, I would sit and watch any like, one of those on any day. On any day, dude. And I, I told you, I told you my Breakfast Club story, right? Wait, what? When that? What? Oh, dude, when the, when the principal of the Breakfast Club was was right next to the Reds dugout in L.A. That's no, story? no, oh, go. This story. is fantastic, so, dude. Right before the game, you know, right before the game. First off, the principal, I can't remember his name, he passed away a few years ago, but great guy. I don't know if he's a great guy, but seemed like a great guy, but he's a great actor, right? Right. And so his character was so good in the principal breakfast club. Richard and Vernon. So all- Richard Vernon. Richard Vernon, yeah. So, dude, so the game's about to start. We're playing the Dodgers, like 2003. And me and Dunner and Turnsey and Griffey, we're all getting ready to play. And I look over to the left, and, and, and at Dodger Stadium, the – the um the really good seats behind the dish they they come out so they're almost parallel with the with the dugout so like when you go on deck they, they're like in your dugout but the, you know the, there's a, there's a wall there so it's probably like it's like ten minutes before the game and I look over and dude the principal of Breakfast Club no is standing there no way yeah and he's just kind of looking in the dugout but he's looking at the field you can tell he's got great seats he's kind of just got there he's excited to be there you know what I mean it's like freaking incredible. So I, 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 I hit Griffey. I go, dude, <laughs> I go, freaking, freaking up, uh, principal breakfast club. And Griff's like, oh my God, it is. And then I done it. Principal, and everyone's like, everyone, we've all gathered around. We're fired up. We're like, principal breakfast club. So I'm like, Bender. <laughs> and he turns back to me and goes, two weeks, Bender. Two yes, weeks. I got you, you for two weeks, pool. Bender. You get the horn. Oh, it's the and dude, he was like, he looked at me, he was like, hey man, all right. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, man. That's so I'm cool. Like, this is so great. 
it was incredible. So that was that was a good that was a good eighty story. By the way, dude, by the way, uh, right. that was his that was his name in a movie. His actual real name is Paul Gleason. Sorry, Paul Gleason, yeah, dude, born in New Jersey. Yeah, he died a couple years ago, right? Uh, let's see, two thousand six. Oh wow, dude! No way, he died like three years after we told him two weeks bender. <laughs> There's a great line by George Carlin where he's like, "Welcome come every time somebody says, oh, this guy died? I just saw him the other day. And Carlin goes, oh, yeah? Well, maybe it was your fucking fault then. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> I love George Carlin. My dad loves George Carlin. Yeah, me too. Dude, um, another, thing, another thing too. Do you watch Cobra Kai? I have not watched one yet. Bro. I have to, right? Do you love Karate Kid? Yes, I do. Okay, dude, they, 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 these guys nailed it. Ugh. These guys freaking nail it. Now, literally, it's a little pop culture because it's like, right. but dude, they they bring back the movie like they, they. It's like it's incredible how they do Daniel Larusso and Johnny and like even like um um uh, what's her name um what, what's the uh, the girlfriend's name um yes it's Elizabeth Shue Elizabeth Shue yeah 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 but, but she right. comes back. Wow. Anyway, dude, Kreese comes back. John Kreese, dude, they nail it. What's so funny is my daughter's watching Cobra Kai. First off, this is this is one when I realized a couple years ago when it first came out, I started watching it um, like four years ago with my youngest daughter, who at the time was about nine. Mm. It's not appropriate for nine year olds. Teenage drinking, sex. Uh. I'm like, I was watching it once. I was like, ah, maybe this is bad parenting. I was like, <laughs> ah, no more for you, Jillian. We're cutting this off. So anyway, everyone watches Cobra Kai, dude. It's, I'm talking about 80s movies. Karate Kid was so good. Dude, they do a great job. They Karate Kid 1, 2, and 3 characters all come back. Oh, wow. You would love it, man. You yeah, would I got to see it. Cobra Kai. You just, gotta watch it. Jess uh, had to escort uh, Ralph Macchio on an elevator up at work last year. And she said to really? him, Yeah, and she goes, Man, your character in my cousin Vinny is one of my favorite characters of all time. And he's like, Really? He's like, nobody has ever picked that character as their favorite <laughs> for me. Because he's, like, he's got kind of like a bit part in it. <laughs> Dude, that's incredible that you said that. I watched my cousin Vinny last night in the hotel. No way. What a movie, dude. Yeah, with Joe, Joe Pesci. Yes. The two youths. The two, two youths. youths. Marissa Tomei won the Academy Award that year. Yeah. Do that you was know? A great movie. Do you know that's there's so a. Funny said, my cousin Vinny, dude. I haven't thought of that movie in years. That's I so watched funny. it last night with Sarah in the freaking mo- in the hotel. We watched it last week. It, it was it was one of those things where normally these this day and age, you don't just stop on a movie and like during the afternoon. But you know, on like Saturdays, like TBS and Turner and stuff will just like play marathons and movies. We actually watched it on TV. And every time it kept going to the commercial, I'm like, why are we not just watching this on cable? She's like, because it's on. Because, you know, they take a little curse word out here and there. Um, dude, the, there's, a, there's a, a, a conspiracy theory that Marissa Tomei did not win the Academy Award that year. Remember a few years ago when Steve Harvey? Or, oh, no, no, Steve Harvey. That was the Miss Universe. A few years ago, they said one thing won. But it actually didn't, and I had to bring the other movie up, whatever. Apparently, years ago, Marissa Tomei may or may not have won. But by the time they got her walking up there, they were like, we just got to say that she won. Because it was going to be what? said. That, yeah, look it up. It's an old school uh, Hollywood conspiracy theory. She still deserved it, though. She was so good in that. It was amazing. Oh, she was, I love Marissa Tomei. I still do. Whatever movie she's in, I'm like, yeah. yes. And she's like, my so biological what? clock is ticking. Like yeah. <laughs> it's ticking. You said, <laughs> what do you say? My niece has a you know, daughter now. Yeah. Same age. Dude, Pesci um, is so good in that. When he jumps up and beats the shit out of the big uh, country guys. That's so, good. so good, dude. He's so good. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, dude. I, I, here's a, speaking of that crew, I remember better. Ed told me a story one one day one, a few years ago. He was in New York at this hotel, and they were in the lobby or something. Or they were going over to like get a drink or something. And like, I want to say like De Niro's daughter was like, "Hey, we're big fans of yours, and my dad's here, you know." And then, dude, Ed said, "You know, Ed's a dude. Ed's one of the biggest movie guys. Movie buff. Dude, one of the biggest movie buffs. And dude, he said one of the coolest moments was like De Niro came out, and he's like." That's crazy. Like, it said, you know, it's so funny hearing Vetter said his story. It was like, me and De Niro were talking. And I'm like, that's crazy. And Ed's like, this is Robert De Niro. I um, can't believe I'm talking to Robert De Niro in New York at a hotel. You know, it's incredible. Unbelievable. Incredible. Eddie yeah. Vetter in Eddie Vetter in a great 90s movie. 
Can you think of it off? Oh yeah, single, single. Yes, so good in that. Great movie. Dude. So that's Great where he, that's where he uses. He always says in uh, when they cover, I got a feeling. He says Jeff Amon had one line, right? Because like, Amon, is it Amon or Amon? Jeff Amon. Uh, Amon. Jeff Amon. Yeah, and when he goes, Jeff Amon had one line. It's because he only had one line in singles. That's why he says it. And I got oh, a feeling. No did you not know no that? Way. You're the biggest no, Pearl Jam fan I've ever. That, if you listen closely, it's somewhere in I Got a Feeling like chorus. No way. I oh, wow. That. That's Where'd one. That's that? a first. That I remember when it happened and I Googled I look. Uh, I don't know if I Googled it back then, but I've since probably. But yeah. Jeff Amon, everybody had a good time. Jeff Amon had a one line. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you don't know that. I'm so proud of myself. That's the most proud that's thing so I've done on the show. That's so good. Dude, right. um, what about one wait one sleeper movie, which the 80s, remember Revenge of the Nerds, dude? Dude, I was just telling somebody about how great that movie was back in the what day. One of the greatest movies ever, dude. When, 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 yes. when uh, you know, Takashi and Wormser and freaking, oh, um, you know. Forget about uh, it. Um, all the, uh, who were the main characters? Um, oh, you and I were talking about that the other day. with Lamar, uh, Lamar Luttrell. Poindexter. Lamar Luttrell. Latrell, Lamar, Lamar Latrell. <laughs> he can't suck. How about when he when he's doing the uh, when he's uh? He's got the javelin. Like the he, javelin. He and made it for Lamar, Lamar's limp wristed throwing style. Yes, the javelin. Limp wristed. Like, wham! <laughs> that was so good, man. You can't make oh that movie. I guess you can. Wait, 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 wait. Gilbert, 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 and well, Lewis and Gilbert. Lewis, I'm Lewis, not, Lewis, Lewis Anthony Lewis. Edwards wound up having one of the greatest TV careers of all time. He was in ER. Right, oh, and he, Top Gun, dude, he's Goose. Good. What yeah. I mean, he I think he wound up. How far? How many of the Revenge of the Nerds did you watch? Oh, I watched the Revenge of the Nerds in Paradise. Nerds dude, in Paradise. That was part two. I went to three. I went to three. I think three yeah. was terrible. Two was decent. Three was terrible. There was one that went straight to cable. It was, <laughs> dude. I'm gonna look it up. It was Revenge of the Nerds for the Jock Strike Back or something. Hold on. Oh, the nerds. I got it. Dude, Bo- Booger was incredible too. Remember when he Dude, beat, Booger Presley uh, on a main guitar. Remember they were remember yeah, remember they were painting the uh, the house when they first got it? He's like, You feel anything yet? He's like, No, I feel nothing. <laughs> and, then, and then he's like, hey, how about now? He's like, I feel nothing at all. Remember he's like and he, he, he's uh, painting the wall. And yes, and it, it's so good. Oh, hold on. Uh strike. The, I just missed Revenge of the Nerds four is terrible. Revenge of the Nerds four is when uh is when Booger gets engaged and gets married. Not good. Not good. It's a uh, Nerds in Love it was called. What is this one called? Anyway, so they go back to the campus, okay? Where now uh Gilbert is like this is, dude, <laughs> I'm going to tell you this and then we got to go. This is so ridiculous. Booger is I'm sorry. Uh wait, Gilbert, who is the main Gilbert. guy? Gilbert. It's like he doesn't have glasses anymore. His hair is like long and he's loaded because he, uh, you know, he became some sort of tech genius. Wait, is it Lewis, Lewis or Gilbert? Gilbert is, Gilbert is Anthony Edwards. Okay, so it's Lewis. Lewis. Sorry, Lewis. So he, and he's married to Betty. He is? Yeah, and I believe he's the dean of the, of the college that they went to. And they live like on campus. Now, who's the guy who was in Happy Days? The blonde guy, great bad guy who played the quarterback. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, Stan Gable. Stan Gable. So Stan is like a loser, had a horrible life, but he's like chief of security. He's like the mall cop. And uh, <laughs> and like all their kids like are there, whatever. And somehow, some way, uh, the mall cop guy like finds a way to kind of like undercut. And so basically, the jocks take back the campus. Even though by then, like the ner- nerds were cool and jocks were losers, the- it's actually worth watching if you're a Revenge of the Nerds fan. <laughs> Just right, don't watch, watch don't watch Nerds in Love though. That was a dumb one, part four. You can never get enough nerds. Okay, Nerds four is good then. No, Nerds five, not four. Nerds five. Okay, I didn't yeah. even know there was five of them, dude. Dude, I don't even know where you could find it. I don't even know. If oh, it's- by the way, by the way, speaking of three, four, five, six, how about three, three coming out, dude? March third. That's gonna be good. That looks that really looks intense. Yeah, dude. That looks legit. Three, three. Dude, they've done a great job with Michael Jordan. Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan of doing these Creed movies. Dude, because they're right. They're nailing them. Yeah, that's another. That's another good like pushing forward without pushing it too bad. What do you? What's your take on remakes though? Like, see Creed. 
I like that it's not a remake of Rocky. I don't love, yeah, no, I, dude. Yeah. I I refused, still to this day, and I never will watch the new Point Break. There was there was a uh, Point well, Break. I like, watched it. I, I, I watched it. Were it you disappointed? Okay. Yeah, totally disappointed. Yeah, totally I can see. It wasn't even close. But and anyway, I watched it with my with my kids one night. I'm like, I almost had to turn it off. It's like you gotta watch the original Point Break. No, this is poop soup. With Busey compared to Bodie, you talk. Give me two. Give me two. Me too. <laughs> Every time I hear that line in that, it makes me want like 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 one of those sandwiches. I think it was a chicken <laughs> chicken parmesan sandwich. Dude, he yeah, was getting. dude. Oh, dude so what good. a movie that was. That was an all timer movie. Swayze. R R I P. Let me go, Bodie. He's like, let me go. Just let me let me ride the last wave. Remember? Swayze Swayze was was jumping out of all those planes too, wasn't he? And he was surfing yeah. in a lot of them. Dude, not Swayze the was a legit. Uh, dude, what about Roadhouse? Remember that movie with Swayze? Dude, Did Roadhouse was so good. Dude, with so, Sam Elliott. That is such a dude movie. You can't really justify dude. that to a female. It's such like well, a macho great. dude movie, but I love you it so the much. the guy out at the end. Yes. Guy comes to get him. Oh, so crap. good. So good. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So as you can see, no, there's no. not much going no, on no, yeah. in no, but, yeah, the sports. Point Break. That's another classic, dude. That, Point Break's another classic. All right. What we learned today. Dude, I think we should I think we should do more movies. Like every once in a while. Maybe like once every month we bring out movies. Let's do it. This is fun. Yeah, and give us some success, some suggestions at home. Right, kids? Yeah, some good suggestions that we'd love to talk about. Yeah, Your especially like think movies. Yeah, and like give us suggestions. Oh, look what just popped up here. Back to school. I'm looking at old movies. Back to school with Rodney Dangerfield. That's a classic. The uh, Triple Lindy. Triple Lindy. And we turn to, to uh What's his name? Who's the best friend in it? Is uh, Sam Kinison. No, no, no. the no, best friend no, of the. Sam ki- Kinison's in it though. Remember? Yeah, Sam Kinison's. Is, he, yeah, he's like. He, screams at the girl right? in the chair. <laughs> is she yeah. right? No, I was gonna say I'm when he turns to, to uh. I'd like to believe that, but I was there. I was on my knees. No. No, when he turns to Robert Downey Jr. At one point, he goes, "Hey, cut it out! You look like the poster boy for birth control." <laughs> There's so many good lines <laughs> in that movie. Anyway, all right. Yeah, so once a month we'll break out some movie stuff. Dude, and let's, I love it, dude. I love let's, talking movies. Let's get some sports action going in the next week or two here. So yeah, yeah, we'll bring up sports movies too. We'll bring up. Genres. Oh yeah, let's do that. We'll do genres. Yeah. All right, this will get us through the uh, the lull in the uh, yeah, sports season, get folks. Us through, yeah, exactly. All, All right. right, All right, buddy. All right, kids. Thanks for everybody listening out there. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Love you, bud. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah.